Hello everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life. This is Simran and this is my podcast Shelf Life where we talk about books, the philosophies, but most importantly, our personal relationship with a book. We are back with yet another episode and um, what do I say? I've just I've been caught up with assignments and work and uh, there's just been a lot going on honestly which is why I've kind of not had episodes for the past two weeks and um, I also spent that time reading so I was going through stuff that I read and um, reading and rereading things so it, it was pretty good like it was a good break um, a much needed one and um, yeah I am very excited to do this episode because honestly this review is probably the most difficult one I've done in a while and and you know maybe ever probably <laughs> but um, this is a really difficult review um, and I'm going to talk about that obviously but the book that we're talking about today is uh, The Heart Asks Pleasure First. It's by Karuna Azara Parikh and it released in 2017. Um, and yeah, it, it was a, a pretty big deal when it released. It's still a big deal. It, people have been reading it and there's a lot going on about the book. I, I mean, I still, um, I was recommended this book now in 2021 um, and I, I didn't know about it before. I had heard about it a little bit later on, I think a year ago or something, uh, but I hadn't read it and I got to it finally. And yeah, I have a lot of stuff to say. <laughs> And the reason I'm like hurrying through the intro as well is because I, I really genuinely want to get into our discussion today. It's um, it's a lot. I mean, I there's a lot to unpack here. I probably won't even be able to do it in one episode, but I want to get into it because um, this was an interesting book, uh, to say the least. I, I don't know, maybe my reaction to it or maybe my experience of reading it was very interesting um, and I think it kind of encapsulates a lot of what our channel stands for as well and, and what we try to achieve because you know I keep saying that shelf life is about how books um, intertwine with your personal lives as well right with your personal stories with your individual experiences and it's all about the experience of reading a book more than it is about the story or the the length of the book or the characters you liked or didn't like of course that's important that's vital that's the core of the book but i genuinely feel like it's all about the experience it's all about how that book relates to your life and uh, which is why you know for most of us especially when we're readers we tend to like books that w are not classics or that weren't considered, um, you know, praiseworthy. <laughs> you know, there, a lot of times that happens. We, we like books that weren't um, pretty cr critically acclaimed or, or that didn't do so well, that didn't sell so well and that probably don't have many takers. But we, are some, we sometimes are drawn to those books simply because they came to us at a time when we needed it, right? We, they came to us and they spoke to us and what they stood for is probably what we stood for at a certain time in our history. So yeah, I, I really feel that. And with this book, I felt like that happened in a lot of places. Um, and yeah, I, I want to talk about that. So let's get to the book, okay? The book, like I said, is um, called... The Heart Asks Pleasure First. It's by Karuna Azara Parikh. And, you know, I, I want to tell you a little bit about the author because it's very interesting again. Um, so Parikh is a lot of things. Um, she is a model, right? She is a poet. She's a screenwriter. She's, you know, also done some TV journalism. And... Um, uh, she's, you know, really tried her hand at a lot of things and I'm sure she's really brilliant at all of them. Um, and uh, this is her first novel. So this is the first time she's written a book and it came out, like I said, 2017. 
and I'll tell you, I, I didn't really know much about Parikh except the fact that she had this really aesthetic and beautiful wedding in Nepal. Uh, <laughs> I think we all kind of, uh, you know, came to know about it through the beautiful photos and just so picturesque. Um, everything, everything was so beautiful. And I remember seeing those photos when uh, the wedding happened and I, rem I don't know how I came about it. I think it just showed up in my feed or something. And it was just so pretty. Like she looked like the most, you know, brilliant bride. And um, it was just so pretty. I, I remember seeing those photos. Like I remember seeing it so clearly in my head. And wh while I was like going through reviews for the book, I was researching a little bit about Parikh uh, before this uh, before this episode. <laughs> I just said interview. I would love to interview her, by the way. Um, <laughs> just putting that out there. Uh, but yeah, when I was researching for this episode um i found those photos again and again it, it was just so pretty so yeah that's how that's how much i knew about uh the author and it's really not a lot but the thing that i wanted to um you know highlight here was that she's actually a poet right and the reason why that's important uh, to mention and to keep in mind before you read the book as well is because um, it plays a really huge role in your experience of reading the book and also in the way that that story is told in the first place so I think you really need to um, kind of know and acknowledge the fact that she is a writer uh, she is a poet first and um, this is her first novel and it's you know, it, it just plays into that whole um, scene. So, you know, I was going through her uh, interviews just before this and um, to give you a little bit of an idea about what the book is and what the story is, I think I'll just say it in her words, right? Because she, she kind of described it uh, really perfectly. It's It kind of encapsulates everything so she said that the book is a love story between India and Pakistan a girl and her passion a boy and his religion and another boy and food and that's pretty much it the book is about um, it's mainly about these two characters Aftab and Daya uh, Daya is an Indian Hindu Aftab is a Muslim Pakistani and um, they meet at university they meet in London uh, run London right or is it is it Wales or London wow I just <laughs> totally forgot um, but yeah they meet in Britain basically <laughs> and um, yeah and, and they meet in a very like um, classic boy meets girl kind of way like it's it's very romantic and it, it's literally the essence of old school romance right so they meet in that way and um they have this whirlwind romance right and there's a lot of other stuff at play obviously because like i said daya is an indian and he's pakistani they're in a foreign country and there's so much to um deal with because of that, their identities. Also in the story is Wasim, who is Aftab's roommate and fellow uh, Pakistani Muslim. And he has his own um, identity apart from this main story as well. Like he is uh, struggling with, not struggling, but he is really understanding more and more about his faith and about um, what that looks like in Britain in a white predominantly white country that is not um, that does not have a Muslim um, majority he is learning about different cultures he's coming into his own um, he has these little uh, eccentric eccentricities I think you could you would call it like he's he he knows a lot about uh, certain things like birds or food or whatever you know he he it's a it's he is his own person um 
also supporting characters in the book but i i honestly wouldn't call them supporting they play a pretty you know substantial uh, <laughs> role in the book are daya's parents gyan and asha they are you know long time lovers and married and um, very happily so asha is this fierce ferocious um, liberal progressive woman and gyan is a very uh, somber not somber but he's very accommodating he's very kind he's very sweet uh, loves his wife and daughter a lot and uh, they are this neoliberal couple who live um, you know in india and in who have access to the upper echelons of society so this is basically all the characters in the book honestly it, it's just it. this is the book and the story is about how all of their lives intertwine and it's set in 2001 um so yeah it, it's set you know many many years ago but this is basically the premise <laughs> and um i think initial thoughts about the book i um i didn't like it okay um not to say that i hated it in fact not that at all i actually thought the book was um really good in a lot of aspects there were a lot of things about the book that i really really liked and there were some things that i absolutely did not like um right but um let's talk about the stuff that i liked okay let's talk about the good stuff first so the first thing that i really want to appreciate about the book is that the author is so sincere um with the writing okay and and i want to really highlight that i want to really highlight the fact that the book has been written with utmost sincerity with an insane an incredible amount of love and kindness for the characters for for the story for the emotion that runs through the pages you know she has taken so much time to really sit with the characters and to sit with just this idea you know and it it shows it really genuinely shows and i just appreciate that so much i appreciate when you can see that a writer has put in a lot of effort for this book okay so 100 on 100 for that for sure and um, in fact it parik actually mentions in um, towards the end in the book um, wow towards the end of the book <laughs> what is up with me um, i just have a lot of thoughts right now <laughs> so uh, forgive me for that but uh, what i meant to say was that in the um acknowledgement section like right, right at the end of the book uh she actually mentions that she had been writing this novel since i think 2007 um so it was like more than a decade almost a decade of writing that story and she says that you know there were she went through so many drafts and and there were so many things that she cut out that she didn't cut out that she reworked and reimagined there was so much that went into the whole process and that really really shows like and and it's so sincere and I, i love that i love that um people take so much time to hone their craft have you ever thought about that like think about your favorite musician or favorite poet or favorite anything and and someone who is like really genuine about um wanting to do well in their craft they take so much time to be good at what they do and it's not even about being good but they just take so much time to be wherever they are honestly speaking it's just especially with artists it's it's uh vital and i don't think you can be an artist without putting an insane amount of energy and thought into what you do so really props for that um it's just really commendable so i really love that um what else did i love about the book i really love that the book you know like i said she because she um 
it shows that she appreciates her craft so much i can tell that she really appreciates just the uh, the act of writing a story like i can tell that she is a lover of stories because there's so many um uh, passages in the book that run like pages and pages long because and they're all just about these um you know these sufi poets for example there's one sufi poet that keeps coming up his name is jamal al khayal i don't know if this was an actual like sufi uh poet i don't think he was because i kind of i i looked him up and i don't know if he was but he keeps coming up throughout the book and 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 um you know she paik really like wants you to connect with that character as well and he has nothing to do with the overall story honestly he, he he's like been dead for <laughs> centuries now but there's that and even the title of the book heart the heart asks pleasure first um that's actually from a dickinson po- uh, poem right and and you can see that parik has a genuine love for writing and and a love of story and i really appreciate that that as well and um, even um the ideas like i said that run through the pages the 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 core of the book which is an interfaith inter nationality love uh, between aftab and daya and between india and pakistan it's very clear it's very obvious that what she's trying to say is that you know this is a different kind of love story it's between um people from two warring countries and uh, this is how it looks and this is what happens and um it's very genuine it's very genuine the point that she's trying to convey is there it's it's right there so yeah so really props for that um she is also what i appreciated was that um she she mentions in one of her interviews was, uh, that she actually wrote the book um while she was falling in love with her husband these are exact words so she wrote the love story of aftab and daya as she was falling in love with her husband and i thought that was so sweet i thought that that was again like a great segue into what this channel is trying to say as well right like we're trying to say that books intertwine with your life stories intertwine with your life right everything has a reason there's no coincidence is everything has a reason everything the way that things move around through space and time it has a reason so i love that i love the fact that um you know she wrote this book while um she was studying in london and um she met a lot of pakistanis herself and and she found you know everything that she learned from that experience she channeled it through into the book love that absolutely love that now coming to the stuff that kind of bothered me okay and it's pretty significant to be very honest and um before i get into that i i wanted to say that this is actually a great time to pick up this book because in case you don't know which <laughs> it, it and that's not possible but in case you missed it india and pakistan actually had a match a couple of days ago it was a world cup match that's what i'm told um i didn't watch it i i'm not a fan of either cricket or like any kind of sport to be very honest so <laughs> I didn't really watch it but obviously I know how it went down I know what happened at the end and um I also know that uh the fact that India lost led to a lot of communal bullying um of Indian Muslims in fact three Kashmiri students were arrested uh in Delhi over alleged claims that they were celebrating Pakistan's win in a cricket match and they were arrested for that and charged with sedition i i hope you're hearing me very clearly because you know these are students and someone said that they were celebrating pakistan's win and they were arrested just like that arrested 
and it's a very scary world to live in right now. Um, there's so many, there's so many more cases, right? So many other, in fact, even an Indian cricketer um, who played for the team got bullied online because, um, because Indian, the Indian team lost and he got bullied just because he is a Muslim. So yeah, it, given the context of the world that we live in right now, I think it's especially important to be reading this book and I really felt that like I felt like it it just the book just couldn't have come at a you know more perfectly aligned sort of timing like I could see the madness that was happening post that <laughs> India Pakistan match and honestly post every India Pakistan match who am I kidding um but to ha to see that and then to see what was happening with um, the characters in the novel, it was pretty insane. Like I just, it felt um, <laughs> it felt crazy. So yeah, that's that's that. That's about um, you know my personal experience as well. But coming to the the part about the book that I didn't like. So again, I started this episode saying that. You can tell that Parik cares a lot of lot for her characters. She's invested a lot of loving energy into them, right? She's written these characters with a lot of love. Um, but that's kind of the problem as well, because for the most part, Parik is extremely indulgent with the characters and the story. And the, and usually that isn't a problem. Usually it's really good when when writers are like really into their stories and I just I appreciate that like I appreciate long uh, backgrounds and, and really like indulgent monologues and um, you know internal processing that the characters do I love that stuff I love it I absolutely dig it but with this book it just didn't work it just felt like it kept going on and on and on with no end in sight. For example, like, um, you know, it just, it just didn't fit, honestly. Like, I, I don't even know how to explain my point with an example, but it just didn't fit. And um, there's so much more. Like, the fact that, like I said, the book is set in 2001. Um, and, of course, there's this big event... Um, that happened in 2001 this this horrible tragedy about how the twin towers fell and and the racism that ensued that the the racism um you know directed towards primarily muslims in predominantly white countries but again it just the book doesn't touch upon that enough honestly speaking it doesn't fully um explore that narrative at all um so there is that there, there's then there's the fact that my main problem of the book was that um it wasn't even the fact that you know um it didn't explore certain things because it does take upon itself a lot like it it has so many things that it wants to achieve right it wants to talk about uh interfaith love it also wants to talk about you know, love between people from Pakistan and India, which are like warring countries. It wants to talk about what it's like to live in a foreign country, what it's like to be an immigrant. It wants to talk about so much, but it doesn't meet, like it doesn't match up 
all its expectations it, it really doesn't it falls short a lot so uh, that honestly wasn't even my biggest complaint it it really wasn't my biggest complaint was actually the fact that i did not or rather i was not able to buy the main love story for some reason i just couldn't i couldn't um really truly believe that these two characters deeply loved each other I, you know what honestly maybe maybe to a certain extent i could believe it but i couldn't believe that they were so overwhelmed by their obstacle that it just kept showing up and they had to struggle with that i couldn't believe in the struggle and to be honest the book is 99 for the 99% of it it's just about that struggle it's about how these two ca characters cannot be with each other and i was not able to buy it um and i know what it is it's the fact that there just wasn't enough build up it there wasn't enough um build up for or rather an explanation or an elaboration on why these characters were struggling so much to be together and to be very honest it doesn't even like you kind of are at a like a loss to understand them and because of that the whole thing ends up feeling so pretentious it just feels like you know they are kind of making this out to be um you know bigger than it actually is for example i'll tell you i'll tell you why i i'm saying that um the characters were making it out to be bigger than it actually was because like these two characters come from really affluent um privileged upper classes both of them they are parents in fact like i said were these progressive liberals um you know who go on and on about how religion shouldn't matter and her mother in fact gives these big monologues about how uh xenophobia is a thing and and you need to stop that and you need to combat it and she's literally like it it feels honestly forced when parak keeps mentioning how this character um you know knows urdu she's learned urdu and she can speak it and she keeps uh you know her, she keeps her house decorated with all uh gods and <laughs> it's just it feels so forced because she's doing it unironically she's actually like she's trying to tell us that this is an actual human being and and that human being believes in what they're doing but that just doesn't convey you can't really believe it um yeah so what i'll say they are parents are extremely liberal extremely progressive really upper class and uh privileged in that sense aftab's parents as well very privileged very affluent of course they have this certain um uh, rigidity to their privilege and they're very you know against their son finding a girl for himself finding someone on his own all of that obviously that's like i honestly felt that like that was <laughs> feeding into a little bit of stereotype but theek hai that <laughs> that's also a thing um so she she mentions that and because of that privilege i just couldn't understand why these characters were struggling so much like i just couldn't believe it for 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 real i just couldn't and i'm saying that because i know what it's like to be in that position right i i know what it's like to think okay you know this thing is not going to work because or might not work because of a certain background because of our backgrounds but again i am not blind to the fact that i have enough privilege to surpass any real damage that might um come my way or to have or the fact that i don't really have to sacrifice anything um really to get what i want okay so i just felt like that was a very critical oversight by the author and you need to understand that if you're dealing with something like interfaith love or internationality love or any of that or any of those things it's very critical to understand 
द प्रिवलेज एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट द क्लास कास्ट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दीज थिंग्स बिकॉज दे डोंट प्ले आउट सोली इन दम सेल्स राइट एट लीज द डैमेज दैट इंस्यूज और दैट माइट इंस्यू द द रिस्क देर इज इन इन कैरिंग दैट रिलेशनशिप इट्स नॉर्मल कोर्स it is extremely like it is very highly dependent on the kind of privilege you have the amount of privilege you have especially in society um so yeah so that was my main concern with this book and i was praying i was really praying before i started that you know it it's not just it doesn't just deal with okay they are from different religions it doesn't make the book just about that but it makes it something beyond that and it it didn't sadly it didn't parik just didn't um go there i don't know why honestly i wish i wish i could maybe you know sit down and talk to her about this hopefully that happens maybe we could get her on an interview but i just i really didn't understand why that was a thing and it was really beautiful like the book is written so beautifully and it is written like a poet has written it okay the the words are just the sentences are so lyrical okay i i cannot stress that enough everything every um every really beautiful sentence has been framed um like a poet would frame it but <laughs> there's a downfall to that as well the fact that um parik goes a little overboard sometimes um there's a there's a line in the book where you know these two characters are i think in a intimate uh situation <laughs> and i think bea says something there's a remark about how she wants to eat aftab's brain yeah the the <laughs> um so yeah that that's actually a thing <laughs> Uh yeah so i found that very very strange um that parik just didn't know where to stop in certain areas and she didn't know where to prod more in certain areas and i just really i really wished that um that she could have you know delineated that space nicely but uh, overall still i just i really love this book and I don't know I I I don't know if I have more that I liked about the book than I didn't like about the book I don't know I don't know where I stand like if someone asks me tomorrow like do you like this book a lot I I don't know exactly where I stand with it I probably I definitely will recommend it I will say that you should pick it up because again very beautifully written and um if you are someone who mm, prefers a sort of writing that kind of explains a lot or that um leaves clear leaves bare its motives for example there's a lot of passages that are really really spoon feeding a lot okay and uh, i don't know why i don't know if that was deliberate i don't know if parik really wanted to drive that message home the fact that you know love is love it's, it it doesn't have boundaries if she really wanted to drill that in but in a lot of places it felt like that it felt like someone was really like <laughs> drilling that message down my throat but you know honestly speaking a lot of people do prefer that a lot of new readers especially they like that sort of um style because it just it becomes easier to connect it becomes easier to connect the characters and i understand that i i don't i don't like take that to heart to be very frank um but yeah i personally felt like that was a little bit that could have been um sorted out a little bit right so yeah that those were my you know <laughs> that those were my critiques and i think you should definitely pick it up still um there's still a lot i want to talk about honestly speaking there was so much in the book that i liked and didn't like i haven't even gotten to vasim's character um like he he was a very interesting character for example i felt like all the 
side characters were quite interesting you know Wasim's character and even Gyan's character Asha's character really interesting but again they just kind of get lost um, with everything that's going on and you don't really get to connect with them too much so yeah i think maybe you know hopefully someday um maybe soon i'll get to talk about this book um with the author with karuna azara parik but i don't know <laughs> until then i think i would still suggest that you read it i would still suggest that you decide for yourself whether you liked it or not and yeah i hope you have a good time i hope you are doing well and still reading um i've been reading too i in fact ordered a host uh, of really good books and books that i'm really excited to read i'm finally reading sally rooney's new novel yeah the one that released i think a month ago probably it's called uh, beautiful world where are you so i'm really excited about that i'm reading girl woman other uh, by everisto and again that's a pretty old book but i'm <laughs> still excited about it i finally got to read it so yeah very excited reading a lot oh also meera sethi meera sethi released a book and if you know me you know that i am obsessed with the sethi siblings ali sethi is like one of my favorite artists ever uh, he he kind of uh, redefined ghazals for me and Yeah, so I I really love Ali Sethi. He's a writer as well, and Meera Sethi is a sister. She's a Pakistani TV actress, very very beautiful and talented, and she just came out with a collection of short stories. So I'm reading that as well. Very excited about it, and yeah, I'll uh, obviously be doing episodes on them. But until then, I hope you read this book. I hope you enjoy it or don't enjoy it. Let me know. Whatever it is, let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a really really blessed beautiful week ahead. Thank you so much.